hello students let us continue chapter atomic structure in this we are going to study about the discovery of nucleus and atom thomson's model of an atom which is also known as plum pudding model over here he showed that uh, the entire atom is made up of possibly charged pair and the electrons are embedded or fixed in it he found that an atom consists of positive and negative charge an atom is electrically neutral positive is equals to negative therefore the atom is neutral negatively charged electrons are fixed in the positive sphere this was the conclusion made by Joseph John Thomson. We can also see his experiment in the following diagram, in which he has concluded that uh, electrons are scattered throughout a positively charged body. Now, Plum pudding model. He proposed Thomson proposed the model of an atom. It was similar to that of a Christmas pudding. Electrons in a sphere of electrons in a sphere of positive charge were like dry fruits in a spherical Christmas pudding. We can also think of a watermelon. The positive charge of the atom is spread all over, like the red edible part of the watermelon, while the electrons are studded in the positively charged sphere, like the seeds in the watermelon. So this was Thomson's explanation of plum pudding model. Now we will be moving on to the limitations of or drawbacks of plum pudding model. Thomson attributed that the mass of an atom, due to the electrons and protons, are evenly spread throughout the atom. Now this is not in agreement with the observations of Rutherford, who concluded that the mass is concentrated in a very small space in the center of an at center of the atom, which is which was later called as nucleus. He showed Rutherford showed this uh, assumption of his, or you can say observation of his, in his experiment. That he made from gold foil, which going which we are going to look after right now. This was the experiment done by Rutherford, where he used alpha particles, and he bombarded the gold foil with it, and found the following conclusions. This he said that in nine hundred eleven, Rutherford, Matson. And Gigo discovered a dense atomic nucleus by bombarding a thin, a thin gold sheet with an, with the alpha particles emitted by radium. From this observation, they concluded that almost all the atomic matter was concentrated in a tiny volume situated at the atomic center, or later on it was called nucleus, atomic nucleus. Because they found that some of the particles got back to their original positions, and some of them were deflected, from which they concluded, or they came in the following conclusions. Now the limitations of Rutherford experiment. One major shortcoming in Rutherford's model is that the electrons should describe a spiral. Before collapsing into the nucleus, but this actually does not does not happen. Another major drop drawback is that it does not say anything about the actual positions of the electrons. That is, they are fixed or they are moving in orbits, as was shown in the later discoveries. Bohr's model of an atom, and he somewhat 
rectified the defects of Rutherford model. He showed that electrons are moving in the fixed orbits as K shell, L, M, N and so on shells with the positive charges in the nucleus. Now both models, ex models explain like that electrons move in circular orbits around the nucleus. Only certain energy levels are permitted. So this explains the discrete lines of the emission spectrum of hydrogen. So this is very from this uh, his model is clear that uh, the protons are lying in the center, the nucleus and electrons revolving around it. Now limitations of Bohr model. In Bohr's model, the quantum theory of stationary orbit is mixed up with the classical idea of column force, coulomb force rather. The assumptions of only circular orbit is utterly it is unjustified. It can only explain the line of the hydrogen and hydrogen-like atoms. It cannot explain the fine structure of hydrogen atom. It cannot make any calculation about the tra transition of the selection rules which apply to them. So these limitations of Bohr model are not that much necessary for this particular level, although it is important, in the, important for the higher levels. Now, moving on to the modern atomic theory. Here we find this, uh, the modern atomic theory gives us this particular idea that uh, the nucleus at the, cent nucleus at the center having proton and neutron in it and the electrons they revolve around the nucleus in their fixed orbits as it is, as it is clear in the diagram. So modern atomic theory says that atoms are made up of three particles protons, neutrons and electrons. Atoms have a nucleus that is made up of protons and neutrons with electrons orbiting around it in their fixed orbits or shells. Protons and electrons have oppositely charged particles are oppositely charged particles. They are oppositely, oppositely charged, therefore they attract. This attraction between the protons and electrons hold the or you can say they they are responsible for um, yeah, holding the electron around the nucleus in their fixed orbits and they keep revolving around the nucleus. So with this, we come to the end of this particular module and we will continue with the atomic structure in the third module as well. Thank you.